Hector Mejia is live in Raleigh with the details behind the plan. Hector? Right now it's a recommendation, but if it becomes an ordinance, it would ban retractable leashes like this one. Those who want to keep the airport open say that the city does not have the resources to transform the airport into anything else. Valley V News reached out to the LA Department of Transportation and one week later, crews showed up to finish the installation. Hundreds of people showed up to celebrate and honor what Cesar Chavez did for the community. Terminal 3 reopens this afternoon, nearly 30 hours after yesterday's shooting that killed the first TSA officer. The ordinance would ban dogs from places like playing fields, tennis, basketball, volleyball courts, and playgrounds. Producers for the Oscars made a last minute decision to take down the rain tents. There's a slight chance of drizzle, and the audience is already seated at the bleachers. In a few moments, these senior citizens will get to fill their bags with food. Every Friday, they wake up at daybreak and make their way to this food pantry. Sometimes we get here two, three hours before it opens. For donations. We need that when we don't have family, when we don't have friends, or we might have friends but they can't help us. They struggle financially. Their social security check can only go so far. That's the only thing that would keep me going, you know, and uh, I guess I just try to stretch that. And the need has been growing. When this Salvation Army program started in downtown L.A. about five years ago, it only served around 20 seniors. Right now it's about 150 people who come here for a warm breakfast and groceries for a week, sometimes even for a month. And you see the need of us standing in that line. Sometimes they run out of bread. So I come here looking for at least for a loaf of bread or something. To keep helping people like Zakaya Abiname, the center counts on donations. <laughs> and volunteers like Maria Lechuga, who as she takes care of her guests, she looks back at moments she shared with her own mother. Piensa en mi mamá. You have to share each other's burdens every now and then. You never know what situation you might be in. The ball? Went the ball? Come on. John Gosnell and his wife rescued Elvis about six months ago. I love him. He's like a kid, you know. He's just grown on me and, you know, I just, I spoil him. I can't help myself. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There's no doubt dogs can quickly become part of the family, but people who take their dogs to playing fields might be breaking the law if the council passes the ordinance. Gosnell backs the idea. Playing fields are for playing sports, so, you know, they're not for dogs. You know, they can cause damage to the baseball field. There's any number of things, you know, the grass, the sand. We've had um, concerns raised by citizens over the last four to five years related to dogs running at large in particular areas, dogs defecating in these areas. The ordinance would ban dogs from places like playing fields, tennis, basketball, volleyball courts, and playgrounds. Dogs without leashes in city parks would also be banned. A length of no more than six feet could become the new standard. Rookie, he sit, sit. Good girl. I don't like the six feet rule. I like the I like an attractable one. But like most of the time, we're out in an area like this where I'm on a sidewalk. There's nobody around, and she wants to go out in the woods. You want a treat? Wake yeah. County Animal Services Director Jennifer Federico thinks okay. the rule might go too far. Really, the only ones you're punishing at the end of the day is are the dogs. As long as you have places where you can release your dog in a controlled atmosphere, I think that's where you take them. City officials are asking the council to develop more dog parks around Raleigh to meet demand. The ban could be voted on in the upcoming council meeting. The airport was already there when most of its neighbors moved in. But critics say the airport has changed ever since civilian jets began using it in the 1960s. When jets are up there, you can you can smell them, and it gives you a headache and a sore throat. Virginia Ernst lives about a block away from the runway. I mean, there's no way you can have planes flying this close to residential properties and there not be a lot of pollution. UCLA researchers found that a Mar Vista neighborhood downwind of the airport had a higher amount of ultra-fine particle pollutants than the traffic congested areas of downtown Los Angeles and Boyle Heights. We don't really know exactly how problematic they are. There's a lot of evidence suggesting that they may be quite problematic. Some people would like to see the airport turn into a recreational area. I'm tired of living in a war zone. 
Those who want to keep the airport open say that the city does not have the resources to transform the airport into anything else and say that the idea of transforming it into a park is not realistic. I don't think it will achieve what the neighbors want, except those neighbors that want their property values to go up. The idea of you know digging up all the concrete that's been laid for the runway and ha has had an airport on it for a hundred years, the ground would be prohibitively expensive to clean. Charles Thompson's aviation business would be affected if the airport closes. Just last month, a federal judge dismissed a lawsuit in which the city tried to gain control and ownership from the federal government. A march in the San Fernando Valley. To recognize a really important person who made a huge difference. Perhaps the most influential Mexican-American leader, Cesar Chavez. He led hunger strikes, organized massive boycotts in the 60s, harvesting crucial protections for California farm workers. I have relatives that used to be in the farm workers, so to me it's more like I can connect with like the struggle. Teaming up with Chavez, Dolores Huerta. The kind of opposition that we had, you know, was not only the growers, the police, the sheriffs, the judges. Hundreds of people showed up to celebrate and honor what Cesar Chavez did for the community. But leaders say that the fight for social justice is far from done. They're the easiest ones to exploit. It's seasonal work. It's in places nobody sees. Farm workers still don't have the same protections across the country primarily the right to organize, the right to have uh, unemployment insurance, a disability insurance. Decades after the first marches, old and young, marching, keeping history alive. Thank you for joining us. The man wanted for shooting and killing a Sanford teenager is under arrest and due in court today. A Triangle research team is working to make life easier for amputees. Stick your leg in there and go whoop, whoop. Definitely a major question here, Fawn. Thanks for that report. Before the court ordered injunction, the state received more than 4,700 applications for Opportunity Scholarships. They came from families in at least 89 of the 100 counties in the state. Work on the NC Fortify project is forging ahead after weeks of nasty weather. Winter blasts delayed lane closures needed to start construction. With the proper barriers now in place, crews will soon start ripping up asphalt to be replaced. Right now, construction is taking place from the 40 split all the way to just north of the Nightdale Bypass. WRAL has the latest information from DOT on the Fortify project. Just log on to WRAL.com and search Fortify.